This video is recorded to help my students to understand how to write recursive function. There are two kinds of recursive functions, recursive for task and recursive for values. In project 9, the students are asked to write two recursive for values functions. These two functions are energy string length char s energy start. The first function is the recursive version of string length. It returns the length of the subset string from s start to the char before slash zero. We know the c string end with slash zero, right? So when string length s zero is called, the length of the s is returned. So this is a recursive version. In general, we can write a drive version uh, like without the argument integer start. In that drive version, you just return the value from this recursive call uh, by call string length s0. But I did not require a student to write this drive version, but the student should understand he can write a drive version because for you to just use drive version will uh, reduce the possible mistake. So next function we will write is integer sum uh, integer n. This is a recursive version to calculate the sum of 1 plus 2 plus up to n. In this presentation, we also write a recursive for task function. Uh, is void write vertical integer n. The precondition n is a positive integer. Post condition output the digits of n, one digit per line. For instance, if n is 3156, the output is 3156. Okay, as user, we first write the structure of the program. So the structure of the program I already write here. You see, it's very simple. So you first declare these three functions. Of course, these three functions you should put a precondition, postcondition to save time. I do not write this. Okay, then you will have main function. In this main function, you need to test uh, all those three functions one by one. Then we implement this three function. At the beginning, we implement in the step form, which is if the function return integer, I just simply return zero. If the function is void, I just simply give a empty function body. When we do this, the structure of the program is finished. And if you compile the program now, it will be built successfully. But the last thing happened because nine of your main function don't, uh, don't do anything. The other functions didn't uh, don't, uh, do anything good, OK? So now let us implement function one by one. We can always implement main function first if you wish to. So for, for example, I first write a function test the, uh, the part code test the string length. So in order to do that, of course, I first declare a C string. For example, you can call this C string call sentence if you wish to. This C string maximum length is 80 char. When you declare the length is 80, you remember one of the char will hold slash zero. So you actually only can take 79 useful information characters. Okay, then you see out. You can see into a sentence. Uh, now, I want in a sentence, so I cannot just simply use C in because C in will end with white space. So I can use code, uh, for example, I can use C in dot get line function. I will get this sentence and I have maximum 80 characters. Actually, in, in order to add maximum 80 character, probably I want this 81, because you remember 1 slash 0 uh, is the indicate of the end of C string, should be the last character. OK, now then I call the function uh, C out. There are. Sentence zero characters in the 
centers. Now, I actually can write the test code first before I even implement this function. Of course, I will leave the part how to test the sum function to you. Then I will write another test code, test the right vertical. The right vertical function will uh, output an integer or his digit vertically, one digit per line. So, uh, of course, I first declare variable integer n, then c out into an integer, then c in n, then you call write vertical function n. It is supposed to write out all the digit of n vertically. So we actually can write the test code first before we begin to implement those functions. Now let's start implementing those functions. Okay, to implement a recursive function, you always keep in your mind is that uh, you need to implement two parts. One part is the base case, which is when the recursive function call is end. Another part is recursive function call part, recursive part. Now, for example, this is string length function. There's, you will return the string length from the start position to the end position. The end position is the position right before the char slash zero. So in this case, what is your base case? That means when this function call will finish. Well, of course, when the function call finishes, when your start position then the char exactly is the slash zero. So you will say if uh, s start equal slash zero, that means start is the um, start is just a, the position where the slash zero is. Of slash zero. In that case, what you will do? You will return zero. That means from slash zero to slash zero, there is no character of the string there. So you return zero. If you don't return zero, that means you what what you will return? How can you recursive call? Recursive call is try to uh, make the fun, uh, problem solution can be expressed as the solution of the of a smaller problem. So we basically can do this: return one plus and make the function call. I calculate the string length of the same string, but this time I start from next position. So you see, if I start from the next position, of course, this length is one less than you start from the previous position. So that's why the previous position, if you call start, uh, for the S and start, is one plus, you call the same function from the start plus one. And uh, when you stop, you stop when the S start equals slash there. Okay, so let us run. You can begin to test the code in the uh, sentence. So, for example, I enter hello word. Then it says there are 12 characters in the sentence. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The white space also count 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes. So we did a correct. Now in the integer, of course, you enter whatever integer, nothing happened because you did not implement write the vertical yet. So how to write a vertical? Well, again, we divide in two cases. One is the base case, right? So 
base case. Another is recursive call. Now, base case is what? So uh, we can say base case is if n is a single digit integer, write it out directly and then return. Right? Now, what is recursive call? Uh, re recursive call is I, I can break this large problem uh, into smaller problems. Huh? Well, I can first write out first uh, you know the the, ex the, the first sub uh, digits except the last one. Okay, write out the uh, I should say uh, the first uh, or the first uh, the front digits except the last one. all digits except the last one. How can you do that? How can you write all the digits except the last one? Well, by calling write vertical n divided by 10. You know, n divided by 10 exactly erase the last digit. Right? So, suppose your function work, so you call the same function for n divided by 10, then you will be able to write all the digits of n except the last digit because you divide by 10, the last, last digit gone, right? Then you just write out the last digit. So after we understand how this happened, the implementation will be easy. So is for example, how do you know n is a single digit? Remember, n the precondition n is a positive number. So n is a single digit is n less than or equal to 9, right? If n less than or equal to 9, then you just out, see out n, of course, due 9, then return. Don't forget the return. This is end the function call. OK? Now, then, after that, if you don't end, that means if you do not return, that means this if statement is not true, then you will first recursive call write a vertical for n divided by 10. Equivalent to say, write all the digits except the last one. Then you write the last digits. So you see out and percent 10. Then that's what give you the last digit. Then they will do nine. Okay? That's it. So now let us test the function. Again, first in the sentence, I just say hello. That's five characters. Yes, it is right. Then into 3156, we say we'll print out 3156. Okay? Now, I hope this video will help you understand more about recursive function. And uh, I left one function in your project nine I did not implement here. So it's give you a challenge to finish it by yourself. Don't forget add the code in the main function to test the sum function you write. If you have any questions, please give me an email. Goodbye.